Our scripture passage this morning comes from 1 John, the third chapter, verses 16 through 20. This is what it says. This is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. But if someone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but refuses to help, how can the love of God dwell in a person like that? Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. Even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than all our hearts and knows all things. So ends the reading of our word, the the word of God for the people of God. Amen. I just discovered I found two of my pens up here. So I must leave them up here. You know, the last few weeks we've been in this series of crazy love. You know, and we're right in the middle of that series. You know, and if you missed the first three weeks of the series, you know, let's take a moment and catch up a little bit. You know, I'll, I'll claim this, that we worship an awesome God. Do we all agree with that? I mean, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, the first week I said, you know, God created 350 billion galaxies, and many of which we've just recently known about since the James Webb Infrared Telescope uh, became operational. You know, God created nearly 9 million different types of animals and plants. And you know, did you realize we've only identified, out of all those, we've only been able to identify 1.2 million of them. I'm constantly trying to wrap my head around why God created cats. You know, they, the way they act, their behaviors, their reactions, how they live or move and breathe, or when they just sit there and they look at you, you know, with that look. The one where they ask, you know, they, that says, feed me. You know, God created each one of us. The 50 trillion individual cells that make up us. And we are beautiful creations. And I sometimes stop and I, I start to think how my body works and it blows my mind. And that the fact that I have a mind that can be blown blows me away. But today, if nothing else, I want you to stop and realize that we are in the presence of one true God, creator of the heavens and the earth, creators of you and me, creator and master of all things, right this very moment. Wow. I mean, if you take nothing else home today, please take this. That the same God, that really big, amazing, and awesome God, loves you with a crazy love. I mean, take a moment and let that soak in. To a God that big, we shouldn't really be that important. Compared to the entire universe, our entire galaxy is microscopic. But God knows every hair on your head. God knows your name. God created you and has been, is, and will be a perfect father to you if you let him. I mean, that God loves you so much that he became really small. He became human-like, just like you and me, in the person of Jesus God lived and breathed and eventually died and rose again for everyone here today and everyone everywhere. When you think about it, it's crazy. Crazy love. 
You know, last week we recognized that we all are faced with choices. We can live a life without thinking much about God or serving God or leftovers. Or we can choose to desperately seek God, running towards Christ with our arms wide open. I mean, I hope you've made a choice to run towards God and the love he has for each one of us. But even if you have made that choice, you may wonder what that looks like. How that will change your life. I mean, that is what we're going to talk about today. As I was telling the kids, there's heroes in the Bible. And perhaps you have a personal uh, favorite. But we're humans, and it seems to be a human trait to want to look up to others. You know, growing up, I idolized my dad. You know, I wanted to grow up to be just like him. You know, maybe for you it was your parents or an older sibling or maybe someone else. But when it comes to loving God and our faith, we have many heroes of the Bible to look to. We refer to Hebrews chapter 11 as the Hall of Hebrews or the Hall of Heroes the hall of heroes of faith, because it speaks of the many of those. The problem is that we forget that these heroes were people just like you and me. They weren't superhuman or divine beings. They were regular folks that acknowledged how much God loved them and did their best to respond So let's take a look at Hebrews 11. And first it starts out with that description of faith. Faith is the reality of what we hope for. The proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. And then it goes on, acts of faith by God's people. By faith, we understood the universe has been created by the word from God so that the visible came into existence from the invisible. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice to God, the Cain, which showed that he was righteous since God gave approval to him for his gift. Though he died, he still speaks through faith. By faith, Enoch was taken up so he didn't see death. And he wasn't found because God took him up. He was given approval for being pleased. God, before he was taken up, it's impossible to please God without faith because the one who draws near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards people who try to find him. By faith, Noah, remember Noah, responded with godly fear when he was warned about the events he hadn't seen yet. He built an ark to deliver his household. And with his faith, he criticized the world and became an heir of the righteous that comes from faith. Now Noah, Noah had a crazy love for God. God told him to build a giant boat on dry land and bring two of every animal on board. And people laughed at him. People laughed at him. They mocked him. Yet he had faith that God would do what he said. And God did. Waters covered the earth and Noah, his family, and all the animals were saved. Noah was crazy in love with God. The next one, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. And by faith, he lived in the land he had been promised as a stranger. He lived in tents along with Isaac and Jacob, who were co-heirs of the same promise. 
And he was looking forward to a city that, w- that has foundations where architects and builder, uh, and builder is God. Abraham, father Abraham, the, the father of a great nation. God called him to leave his home and to go out into the wilderness. And you know what? Abraham followed him. He had amazing faith. But that faith was shaken from time to time. Abraham lied and told foreign kings that his wife Sarah was his sister to protect himself. He laughed when God told him that he would become a father in his very, very advanced age. Our scripture says, by faith, even Sarah received the ability to have a child though she herself was barren and past the age of having children because she believed that the one who promised was faithful. So descendants were born from one man and he was as good as dead, which kind of says he was close to death. They were as many as the numbers of stars in the sky and as countless as the grains of sand on the seashore. All these people died in faith without receiving the promises. But they saw the promise from a distance and they welcomed them. They confessed that they were strangers and immigrants on the earth. People who say this kind of thing makes it clear that they are looking for a homeland. If they had been thinking about the country that they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return to it. But at this point in time, they are longing for a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God isn't ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. By the faith Abraham offered Isaac, When he was tested, the one who received the promise was offering his only son. He had been told concerning him, your legitimate descendants will come from Isaac. He figured that God could even raise him from the dead. So in a way, he did receive him back from the dead. Now, Abraham took his son up on a mountain and plunged a knife towards his chest because God commanded him to do it. But Abraham's had so much faith that even if he killed his own son, God would raise him from the dead. And then by faith, Isaac also blessed Jacob and Esau concerning their future. And by faith, Jacob blessed each one of Joseph's sons as he was dying and and bowed in worship over the head of his staff. And by faith, Joseph recalled the exodus of the Israelites at the end of his life and gave instructions about burying his bones. And by faith, Moses. Moses was hidden by, uh, by his parents for three months when he was born because they saw that the child was beautiful and they weren't afraid of the king's orders. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of a Pharaoh's daughter when he was grown up. He chose to be mistreated with God's people instead of having the temporary pleasures of sin. He thought that the abuses he suffered for Christ were more valuable than the treasures of Egypt since he was looking forward to the reward By faith, he left Egypt, his home. Without being afraid of a king's anger, he kept on going as if he could see what is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood in order that the destroyer would not touch their firstborn child. By faith, they crossed the Red Sea as if they were on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried it, they were drowned. Now Moses is someone we could look up to. And then by faith, Jericho's walls. 
They fell after the the people marched around them for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute wasn't killed with the disobedient because she welcomed the spies in faith. Rahab, I, I love the story of Rahab. She lived in Jericho before Joshua led the Israelites to conquer the city. Rahab wasn't Jewish, but she had faith in the one true God. And so when spies came into the city from the Israelite camp, she took them in and she hid them. She risked her own life to protect those spies and ultimately help the Israelites conquer Jericho. She was there when the walls came tumbling down. But Rahab, she was an outsider. She had may, may have worshipped other gods. And worst of all, she was a prostitute. What more can I say? I would run out of time if I told you all about Gideon and Barak and Samson, uh, Jethro, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through faith, they conquered kingdoms brought about justice, realized promises, shut the mouths of lions, put out raging fires, escaped from the edge of the sword, found strength and weakness, were mighty in war, and routed foreign enemies. David, David is described as a man after God's own heart. David had faith for sure. I mean, he wrote a lot of the Psalms and many say he loved God desperately. I mean, Hebrews goes on and talks about the men and the women who died of their faith in the early days of Christianity. Chapter thir- or verse 35, women received back their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured and refused to be released so they could gain a better resurrection. But others experienced public shame by being taunted and whipped. They were even put in chains and prisons. They were stoned to death. They were cut in two and they they died by being murdered with swords. They went around wearing the skins of sheep and goats, needy, oppressed, and mistreated. The world didn't deserve them. They wandered around in the deserts, the mountains, the caves, the holes in the ground. We call these people martyrs. They literally died because of the love they had for God. And all these people didn't receive what was promised. Though they were given approval by their faith. God provided something better for us so they wouldn't be made perfect without us. See all these heroes? These people had incredible faith and incredible love for God. And they were just like you and me. They all had past. They all had made mistakes. Some of them really big ones. But they all had a choice to follow God. And for some of them, they meant giving of themselves and their very lives. Think of Jesus. Of course, there's no better, greater example than the one we find in Jesus Christ. Jesus gave everything out of the love for God, his Father. I mean, Paul explains it like this in a letter to the church of Philippi in Philippians, uh, the second chapter. It says, though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God, something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. He he found himself in the form of a human. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names. 
so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So following Jesus Christ means loving God, loving others, and following Jesus' examples. It may seem impossible to imitate Christ, but he calls us to do just that. Jesus lived his life by giving of himself, and ultimately he gave himself away completely on the cross. But he calls us to give. He reminds us that loving others means loving God, and giving of ourselves is an act of love. He even says that what you do not... uh, um, what you do, not, uh, not to the least of these, you do it for me. He means when we ignore a person in need, we are ignoring him. When we love by giving ourselves, we love him. <clears throat> in the Gospel of John, it describes this is how we know love. This is our Bible scripture for today. Jesus laid his life down for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for our brothers and sisters. But if a person has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, and that person doesn't care, how can the love of God remain in him? Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. I mean, you can say you can love someone, but unless your actions prove it, it doesn't mean a whole lot. God didn't give us leftovers. He gives us his very best. In Christ, God sacrificed everything to show how far his love for us went. And John is reminding us that if we desire to love God by loving others, we have to do the same. I mean, we can give in many ways. In our church here at Zion, we encourage people to give of their time their talents, their gifts, and their service. God has given us all talents, and all those talents can be used to love others. God also gave us the ability to serve, ways to serve. You know, time seems a little bit harder. Do you make time for others? We all think we are really busy. Several years ago, I I kept track of everything I did in 15-minute increments in a day for an entire month. And after a month, I realized that even though I was in ministry full-time, that I wasted a lot of time. And I guess I still do. Finally, we come to the one of the very hardest, yet the most important, our gifts. A couple weeks ago, I said the average person on earth, about a third of the world's population lives on less than $3 a day, compared that even the poorest of us live in abundance. And I believe all the money I have is a gift from God, so immediately I give 10% back to God. But is 10% enough? I mean, Jesus didn't give 10%. God doesn't love us with just 10%. What would it look like if we gave more to push ourselves, our time, our service, our gifts, our, worship, our, our witness? I want you to think about how much more you can give. Are you giving time to God and your talents to God and your gifts and your service? Can you give more? I don't believe it would be that burdensome to give just a little more to others, to give a little more of ourselves. So why don't we all go out and do like Jesus commands? And you know what he commanded? To sell everything, everything we own, to follow him. It all comes down to one word, trust. The number one reason we don't give of ourselves more and therefore love God more, is we lack faith. 
And the number one reason we lack faith is because we fail to truly trust God. I mean, if I told you to sell everything you own and give it to the poor, you would ask me a myriad of questions like, how, how would I pay my bills? Or feed my family? Or watch television? When Jesus commissioned the 70 disciples to go out and proclaim the good news, he told them to take nothing with them. He wanted them to trust fully on God. And that is what those heroes in the Bible were all about. Full of trust in their Lord and Savior. So I want you to go home today and ask yourself a few questions. First ask, do I really believe God loves me? And if not, I want you to pray for God to show you his crazy love for you this week. But if you answer yes, I want you to ask yourself, am I responding to God's love by loving others? I mean, think, think of ways that you're giving yourself. Can you give more? Can you challenge yourself to be generous and a joyful giver of your time, your talents, your money, and your service? And finally, ask yourself, do I truly trust God? Are, do my actions testify to that trust? And pray for God to help you trust him more. Pray that your fears disappear and you are overcome with the goodness, his grace, and his crazy love for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these words of Hebrews that you give us these examples of heroes of faith from us. That we can truly know that they were no different than you and I. Be with us as we ask ourselves the questions that have we experienced your crazy love? And have we expressed that crazy love to others? Continue to be with us, mold us and shape us and those images that you once created us to be your image. To be your disciples of Jesus Christ in our world. Amen.